The uh, founder of The Riveter, uh, she is, uh, she's really, I mean, I feel stupid sitting in the same room with her. She's a graduate <laughs> of Emory University, NYU School of Law, practiced corporate litigation with a focus on uh, high-profile prof- First Amendment matters for over a decade in New York and then in Seattle, mother of four, contributor for Inc., the host of iHeartRadio's What's Her Story with Sam and Amy, She's raised $30 million in venture capital, uh, venture capital to grow the Riveter. Uh, she's also been published in the Washington Post, Newsweek, Seattle Times, and um, she's been all over the world speaking. Fortune's most powerful women. I mean, jeez. Overachieve <laughs> much, Amy? No. Uh, <laughs> so, Amy, you were on with us. By the way, welcome. Thank L- you. Glad you're here. Thank you. Um, and you're sitting up taking nourishment. That's always good. Uh you you came in here for the um, uh, Targets of Tyranny special, and we had been in correspondence for a while mm-hmm. um, because of what happened to you and your husband in Seattle with Amazon and the feds. Can you quickly just recap that for anybody who doesn't remember? Yeah. So my husband worked for Amazon Web Services for nearly eight years. If you don't know, AWS is a subsidiary of Amazon where... The internet lives. Cloud computing lives in these big data warehouses across the world. My husband worked in real estate, helped scouting locations that would be good to build data centers and, and, a lot, and projects along those lines. He left Amazon in 2019, and on April 2nd, 2020, the FBI knocked on our door. We learned then that my husband was being accused, at the time we didn't know by who, of a crime called private sector honest services fraud, which is depriving your private employer of your honest services. At the time, the FBI did not ask my husband what happened. It was clearly an accusation. And two months later, um, the government used civil forfeiture to seize all of our family's bank accounts. Your bank accounts, your husband's, your joint, everything. I mean, to the point, Glenn, the DOJ went into our law firm's client trust account and seized all of the money we had paid our lawyers. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And my husband at that point had never been charged with a crime. In fact, he never was ever charged with a crime. Civil forfeiture is something the government can use. It's a tool. And they can seize your money, your home, your safe deposit box. Squeeze you in every way they possibly can. And many times you don't get the money back. You really don't. And we really were kind of told, like, don't expect to ever get the money back no matter what. Um, That's craziness. It is crazy. That's King George, you know, Declaration of Independence style stuff. Well, and the thing is, you know, it's it's a tool, right? It's a a pressure tool. So my husband had been accused on April 2nd, 2020, and the prosecutors wanted him to plead guilty um, to a crime. It was all very unspecific. It was unclear. And the crazy thing is that largely what my husband was being accused of depriving Amazon of his honest services related to actions my husband took after he didn't work at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, um, we did fight and, you know, we, we had four little girls, um, we sold our home, we sold our car, we liquidated our retirement, we borrowed money from family and friends to pay lawyers and to survive. And didn't they go into your family's accounts too? Oh my gosh. So my father, yeah. Yeah. So my father was critically ill. He almost died. He actually got a life-saving kidney transplant in April of 2020. And two weeks later, the FBI emptied out his bank accounts. Um, my husband and I had paid for his medical care. So, you know, it's, he would have died if my mother couldn't help him pay his medical bills. So um, many times people see this and go, yeah, but there had to be something. You, you told the story of what that something is, and it revolved around a very expensive lawsuit from Amazon. So to preface this, we had no idea what was going on. And the day the FBI showed up at our house, my husband hired criminal defense attorneys and said, please call Amazon and tell them, I will come in and talk to them. I I don't understand what's going on, but I have nothing to hide. And Amazon's lawyer said, we will only speak to him if he is pleading guilty to a felony. And at the time, we were like, what is going on? I mean, Amazon's lawyers squarely put the DOJ between the company and my husband. Very few companies have that kind of access to DOJ. Mm -hmm. And for an institution that's meant to be apolitical, that's wrong. It's just wrong. Um, but what we learned over the course of years and spending a lot of lawyer, lawyer money is that in February of 2020, Amazon broke a contract with a real estate developer. And by the explicit terms of that contract, 
unless they could prove the developer committed a felony crime, they were going to owe him over $100 million in damages. The next day, after they broke the contract, they had their first meeting with the Department of Justice. They met with the Department of Justice over 100 times trying to lobby for criminal charges. The government spent countless FBI hours and prosecutors hours, like essentially doing Amazon's bidding. And what we do know is despite all of the things that Amazon told the government, they never told the government that they had broken a contract and needed a felony or they would be liable for a hundred millions of dollars in damages. So you decided to fight. Yes. I mean, you know, you're, you guys are fighters. You decided to fight. It has cost you a great deal. Your husband, nor you or anybody else has ever been charged You thought this was kind of wrapping up, Mm -hmm. and then you came on the special. And I think I may have said, are you sure you want to come on? (laughs) And I know I said, I hope nothing happens because of this. The day after, coincidence? I don't really believe in coincidences anymore, but the day after, the Department of Justice subpoenaed Amazon for all of the documents that Amazon had that had been produced in the civil litigation. Because... After Amazon failed to get criminal charges, they sued my husband. And I'll I'll note something about that that I think, you know, Amazon didn't anticipate. But usually when you're accused of a crime, you never get to see the communications between your accuser and the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. And in this civil case, because Amazon sued my husband, my husband was able to see all those communications. Mm -hmm. And they're very shocking. And I mean, to me as a lawyer, I, I was floored by the things that have been made public that I've been able to see. Why? What what was seen? Um, Amazon hired a former federal prosecutor from the Eastern District of Virginia. They mm-hmm. paid him millions of dollars to lobby his former colleagues for criminal charges. Am- uh, the, former pro- the current prosecutors in Virginia immediately ushered in Amazon for a meeting. They set up a meeting with the prosecutor's press office because clearly this was going to be such a sexy and scandalous case. They never checked anything Amazon said. They never asked to see my husband's terms of employment or his non-compete. Like, they just didn't ask to see it. Amazon said they had paid this real estate developer $16 million. Amazon had paid the real estate developer $0. So nobody ever checked anything. They just went for it. Because it was really literally an old boys network. I I know you. You know me. Just this is a problem. I mean, we have an email that's now in the public docket in Virginia where Patrick Stokes, Amazon's lawyer, asked his former colleague, Jessica Aber, who's now the U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, who just sued Amazon's main rival, Google. Mm. And Pat Stokes said to Jess Aber, we want to talk to you about civil asset forfeiture. Prosecutors in the Eastern District of Virginia have not used civil asset forfeiture outside of a drug case in 13 years that I can find. So this is now being looked at again for the second time? You know, I really think that Amazon keeps pushing DOJ to try to do something and DOJ isn't doing anything except kind of, you know, just the investigation just kind of hangs out there because it's a threat, right? And unless Amazon can get a felony conviction of this real estate developer, they are going to be liable for damages. All right. So um, the reason, and we talked about this, you mentioned this, but I have been seeing more and more stories about people from the DOJ going to work right directly to the Pentagon and people from the intelligence agencies. This is terrifying because there is a public-private partnership that you should be very aware of. Our DOJ, our national security agencies, all of them are using Amazon, Amazon as their cloud bank. When you have that, you have control of the government or the government has control of you at best at best if one doesn't have something over the head of the other they're partners in everything that is extraordinarily dangerous it's incredibly dangerous i mean and the thing that kind of blows my mind is that no one's even really paying attention to it i mean on amazon's board they have the former head of the nsa keith alexander That's not a person with business experience that should be on the board of a big company. The sole reason, I mean, why else would he be there other than to get contracts with the NSA? And sure enough, in 2021, the NSA quietly awarded Amazon Web Services a $10 billion contract. Like, it's something that we should all be very frightened of. It's happening across big tech. It's happening, you know, you've read the Twitter files, Mm -hmm. you see it everywhere. And Amazon is hiring hundreds 
Hundreds. Hundreds of CIA, FBI, former federal prosecutors. And what just having those guys in a high tech company that has the information on each of us that Amazon does, that's not good. Oh, and there's no wall between that company and the government. Absolutely not. Right. There's no wall at all. And you look at things like Amazon is now getting into pharma. Right. And Amazon just launched a five dollar yep. subscription to get your pills. Now you're going to give all your health data to Amazon. It's terrifying. And Jeff Bezos, he's an oligarch. Right. If you looked yep. at the indictment of the FBI agent Charles McGonagall, mm-hmm. it described an oligarch, Deripaska, as a man of vast wealth with close ties to the government. That is exactly what Jeff Bezos is. So what's next in this? Have you written off ever getting your money back? So we actually got our money back, Glenn. So we pulled off what people thought would be impossible. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. It was. You should um, do a podcast just on how to do that. I I know (sighs) lots of people who. I know. Just driving through town. They had cash. The sheriff pulls them over. The cop pulls them over. That's ours. I mean. You never get it back. It's, how, did, it, how did that happen? So the government, it's such a strange process. It goes back to the time of pirates. But when the government seizes your money and they don't charge you with a crime, they then have to sue your asset. So they sue your bank account. It's like U.S. versus $4,000 at Wells Fargo. And they do that because your assets don't have due process. <laughs> so they can just avoid all due process. So the government here sued our bank accounts, went to the court, paused the case for six months, went to the court again. Asked to pause it for six months. Judge said, judge said, you only get four months this time. They wanted to pause it again, and it wasn't going to happen. So it was time to litigate. And it was time for the government to prove their case against the bank accounts. And instead of opting to prove the case, the government gave us the money back. Unbelievable. And this how is... long was that from beginning to end when you lost the money to when you finally received it again? It was 22 months. Jeez. So for 22 months, you had nothing. I, we had nothing. We had to figure out how to feed our four daughters. And my mother was amazing. My mother was a public school teacher, worked her whole life. And my mother kept asking, don't they care about your daughters? You have a baby. And I said, mom, they don't care. She's like, this is our government. And I said, they don't care. They care about Jeff Bezos and Amazon. They do not care that we have children to feed. They did say when they seized our money. That if my husband pled guilty to a crime, they'd give some of it back. It's such a transparent tool of corruption. It should be gone. It should be abolished. So you mean you meaning that threat where they can say, hey, just say you're guilty and, we'll, and then we'll make this all better. Therefore, getting the guilt, guilty plea out of you. And yeah. it's really kind of yeah, your only they option. Held, they point. held everything, including if this goes down mm-hmm. and we arrest your husband, we're going to do it in front of your children. My husband asked, his lawyers asked the prosecutors over and over again, who were saying in 2020, we're charging him, we're coming. Right? They never charged him. But, you know, they, they, they threaten you. And my husband's lawyers asked the prosecutors, can he turn himself in if you're going to indict him? And the prosecutor said, no, we will arrest him in your home in front of the kids. Isn't that crazy? That's just wrong. Knowing yeah. that that was their, a big fear of theirs. This is, this is so corrupt and so bad. Amy, thank you for for. Um, telling the story, final thoughts or advice? Well, as you know, Glenn, I've been a progressive my entire life. And one thing that has really surprised me in all this is that progressives see things in black and white. The right side sees things in black and white. But really, this is about our rights. And we should Mm -hmm. all be fighting for the same rights, including due process. And so I just hope that the Department of Justice could try to be more fair and transparent. Is it over? It's not. It's not over, but it will be someday. That's what my husband says. This can't last forever. That's just crazy. Do you still consider yourself a progressive? I consider myself politically homeless now. Yeah. I think a lot of people feel that way. I think so, too. And it's weird because if you're a classic liberal, um, then, you know, I call myself more of a libertarian, but it's also classic liberal. It's the same thing. It really is. I believe in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. That's... That's that's all that's important. The rest of it is nonsense. It is, and there's so much ink spilt distracting us. Yes, from those things. Yep, yep. Nobody ever talks about those things. Mm-hmm. I mean, your story and stories like you, that should be everywhere, and that's something that both Republicans and Democrats and Independents should all be standing up and saying, "This has got to stop." Because if they'll do it to you, they'll do it to anybody. They truly will. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. My best to your family. How are your kids? They're great. They're amazing. They're kids. They're resilient. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.